statement, or a purpose statement, a vision statement, most of us do. Do you have it memorized? Southwest, we wanted every employee to memorize because if it's who we say we are, it needs to be a standard of performance. We don't want to just manage to a job description. We want to manage to something higher that we can all commit to. Who in this room would like to see the people that you represent perform at a higher level? Yeah, because that's the stuff that keeps you up at night. And so that's kind of what I was thinking today uh, would be about. Let's talk about how do you really drive profitability? What are some of the leadership principles that you can apply? How do those leadership principles impact culture? So it's gonna be a little bit like drinking out of a fire hydrant. I'm just gonna throw a lot at you really fast, take in as much as you can. Look for those one or two pearls, those one or two nuggets that are meaningful to you. And then uh, be selfish with this time though. Look for things that you can apply personally, professionally, emotionally, spiritually, relationally. Things that you can go back and use to add value. Dedication to the highest quality of customer service delivered with warmth, friendliness, individual pride, and company spirit. That's a pretty good statement about how we want to interact with our customers. If I'm grounded in this, it, it becomes the guiding light for how I want to interact with all of our customers. And if we see inconsistencies with this, it makes it easy for us to address those. But to do it, you have to memorize it, you have to commit to it, and you have to be willing to speak to it and manage to it. If you want to impact culture for long term, there's some ways that you can do that. And then what is the impact of that on employee engagement? Because it, really that's what we're talking about. We want to get everyone back in the game. Uh, we, I, I, it's epidemic in America. People are just trading hours for dollars. They're not really engaged. They don't really care about what they're doing. They're definitely not having fun at work. And if we're going to spend this much time doing what we do, it ought to be a place where we're growing and developing and where we're encouraged. We spend half our awake life at work. Who do we want to be around? Who do we want to be? Right? I guarantee if you were all walking to a party, you wouldn't do this. Hey, an angry guy, maybe he'll explode. You don't do that. Wow, she looks depressed. Sit with me, ruin my life. <laughs> but I watch people go and spend half their awake life at work around angry, depressed people and never do anything about it. And we want to build it right into who we say we are right from the beginning, in our mission. This is who we are. We're fun, we're creative. We want to free people up to be fun and creative. They focus on their strengths and they grew exponentially. You take a customer service person, let them focus on customer service, they'll grow exponentially. You take a trainer, let the trainer focus on training things, and it grows exponentially. You take a case and put in that account, and they'll jump over the page. I had a customer service agent in Los Angeles, uh, right after I got there, she said to me, I'm not paid to smile, it's not my union contract. Oh, okay. But I just come out of customer service training where I've been teaching this, so I, I was well grounded in this. And we train all of our supervisor in this same kind of thinking. We, it's, it's not me writing up the employee or me telling the employee they're being insubordinate. It's me reminding the employee of who we are. And that's exactly what I did. I said, can you do me a favor, shut your position down, come with me. We went to the back office where we have this mission statement hanging. And I took it off the wall and said, have you seen this? She said, yes. I go, let's review it. Dedication to the highest quality of customer service, a little bit of warmth, friendliness, individual pride, and company spirit. Now, in case you forgot what warm and friendly means, on the back of that, we had behaviorally defined what warm and friendly means. Just three things. You smile, you use the customer's name, and you thank them for flying. You are paid to smile. Please go back to work. I'll be letting your union rep know we had this conversation. New York Times did a survey. The number one reason people work in America, guess what it was? Compensation was number four. Benefits was number three. Number two was the nature of the work. I get to do something I feel competent and capable to do. The number one reason? I want to be recognized as being significant. If 90% of my emotional recognition is going here, what am I training this 80% to do if they want my attention? To go here. You want to radically change the way your department feels? Start using all your emotional energy, recognizing the behavior that you want repeated. Use your best business demeanor. Privately pull people aside and correct this. You will see people scream that direction. See how different that feels? And if you have a group of supervisors equipped to use positive language, I mean, that's so much stronger than I'm going to write you up, right? So, so let's begin to think about who, who are we, right? Same is true at home. I have a five-year-old daughter. She'll climb in the middle of, the, uh, of our glass top table to get to the fruit bowl. I'm afraid she's going to fall through. She's built like me. And I'll say, Laura Lee, honey, you're a good girl. Good girls don't climb on the furniture. Get off the table. I want to, I want to reinforce that your, behave, your, your behavior is inconsistent with who you are. How many would like to leave and just give a, just have a little more enthusiasm and be able to spread that to the people around you and maybe a little more inspiration and, and share that with the people around you? Most people are going to say yes to that. You know the root of enthusiasm? You guys may have heard this before. 
It's a, it's a Greek word. It's in theos. Same word we get theology. It literally means God within. It's a belief in you that when people experience it, it lifts them up. So do you believe in service so much that when people are around you, they want to get better service? Do you believe in people so much that people are drawn to you? Do you believe in, in relationships and community? If we do, let's share that. Let's let that energy go. Let's, let's be a blessing to the people around us. That's like inspiration. That's what that is. You know, to inspire, you know what that is? It's a Latin word, to breathe. When you breathe, you inspire. When you do not breathe, you expire. That's right. <laughs> Think about this one or two ways. What happens if employees feel like they have no responsibility, no power and influence? What mentality creeps in? Negative, apathetic, I call it the victim mentality. Woe is me, look at me, look at what they've done to us again. It's, it's the victim mentality. Here's what, looks, go ahead, here's what it looks like at work. Yeah, that's a, that's a risky slide. Everybody blaming everybody else. Everybody blaming everybody else for their current reality. The reality is we are all where we are today based on every choice we made up to today. No one else's fault, no one else's credit. We will be where we are a year from now based on how much ownership we take in our current reality. You can be anywhere you want to be, but you have to own your current reality. That's the only way you're going to feel free to have success. And I, feel, I can feel totally free right now, right? I can be fully accountable for the mistakes I've made, be fully accountable for the accomplishments, but because I own that. But the minute I start blaming everybody else, I lose power. And if you want to bring this to make it actionable in the workplace, Every time someone takes responsibility, give them more power and influence. Or if you want to plug in recognition there instead of power, give people more recognition. Now you see the front line empowered to help customers, empowered to serve each other internally. Every time I go to Hawaii, they greet me in a special way. What do they say? They say aloha. And they don't just say aloha, they also will kiss you on the cheek or they'll touch your cheeks. And I ask a friend of mine over there, Kina Sai, she's an expert in the Hawaiian language. And I say, Kina, what's the deal with aloha? She said, well, ancient islanders, um, when they would row up on a friendly visit, these big warriors, the Samoans, Tahitian, Tongans, uh, the, the Hawaiians, they would extend arms with palms up. That was a sign that says, look, I'm unarmed. It's a friendly visit. It's like a handshake is, look, I don't have a gun. That's all it is. That's where it comes from. And these big warriors would grab arms and they would say, alo. A-L-O in Hawaiian means face. They would pull each other face to face and then they would share ha. And ha is an onomatopoeia. It's, a, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a breath. It's an inspiration. They believed if you shared breath, you shared spirit. Isn't that beautiful? It literally means I welcome you with a blessing. I welcome you with my spirit. Right? Um, they say aloha when you leave. There's no formal word for goodbye. They say aloha. I send you away with a blessing. I send you away with my spirit. The word Hawaii, it's the same root word. Ha, why, why in Hawaiian means water. Hawaii is a place in water that renews your spirit. It's a place in water that brings life. If you guys do nothing leaving here today, just go back and share some ha. <laughs> and it's no accident, laughter is ha ha. Right? Now I made that up, but I think it fits. Let's, let's laugh more, and let's love more, and let's bless each other more. You guys have been a blessing for me today. Thank you so much. I wish you a fond aloha.